In the 1940s, men walked a different path of masculinity than what we observe today. A direct form of communication, characterized by robust intellectual debates and confrontations, was not only accepted but also encouraged. The interactions of men in that era were not shrouded in the veil of political correctness, nor were they stifled by the fear of inadvertently offending someone. Men leaned into challenges, often provoking intellectual sparring as a way of testing one another's mettle. The culture was such that one's resilience and intellectual agility were scrutinized, thereby enabling men to earn the respect of their peers. This forthright and often rigorous approach provided men with a set of tools that were invaluable in both their professional and social lives. It engendered a culture where competence and accountability were held in high esteem. Fast forward to today, and the story is vastly different. Our modern, woke-oriented society places a premium on avoiding conflict. It has normalized the practice of tiptoeing around sensitive issues to dodge the risk of causing perceived slights or so-called microaggressions. This zeitgeist has given rise to a generation that looks for so-called safe spaces and dons a mindset centered on victimhood. Such an environment, aimed at pacifying and coddling, effectively shields individuals from the sort of challenges that could refine their intellectual prowess and argumentative skills. Consequently, people who subscribe to this ethos often find themselves in a loop of disempowerment, cut off from the opportunities that come with facing adversity head-on and overcoming it. The men of yesteryear understood the pitfalls of avoiding confrontation and intellectual growth. They took it upon themselves to raise the younger generation under the banner of certain values and skills that they deemed indispensable. Take, for example, the Young Men's Christian Association or YMCA in the 1940s, which conducted structured discussion groups aimed at promoting skills in debate, interpersonal communication, and a general awareness of global issues. These discussions were facilitated by experienced leaders who wanted to sculpt well-rounded men, armed with both intellectual and practical skills for personal and professional success. The goal was to cultivate a holistic masculinity, grounded in self-confidence, rationality, and the kind of emotional strength that couldn't be easily perturbed by contentious discussions or differing opinions. Imagine, if you will, how different our contemporary society would be if it had continued to embrace this model of masculine growth rather than pivoting toward the prevailing culture of woke victimhood, a feminine ethos. We might have had a society that values straightforwardness over obfuscation, that prioritizes merit and competence over delicate sensibilities. The disappearance of these forms and their replacement with an culture that shirks away from intellectual rigor does more than just shift social dynamics. It fosters a culture in which the younger generation is left ill-equipped to navigate the complexities of the real world. In doing away with the masculine model that once thrived in the 1940s, society has missed out on the virtues that can be gained from a culture that sees the benefit in robust debate, in confrontation, and in the ability to tackle challenges head-on. The modern obsession with avoiding conflict and seeking emotional comfort may be doing a disservice not just to men, but to society as a whole. And for that, it's worth pondering what we've lost in the transition and what, if anything, can be done to regain it.
that still remains the same through all this changing Much obliged you hopped on board for this snazzy trip through American life in the 1940s and 1950s, all captured through nifty vintage photographs. If this flick's got your motor running, don't be a square. Click on that jolly bucket of bolts to subscribe to the channel for more top drawer content just like this. Thank <laughs> you.